Have you heard everybody that the Easter Bunny was officially declared an essential worker by the World Health Organization? I heard he had to brush up on his uh, safety, food safety procedures and paw washing uh, and all that stuff. Uh, you can even track his progress around the world online. It's, it's pretty amazing what technology can do today. Have you ever thought about what is the connection between bunnies and eggs and baby chicks uh, with the true meaning of Easter. You, you wanna know what the connection is? There is no connection. It has nothing to do at all with the, the true meaning of Jesus. There's no mention of bunnies in the Easter story in the Bible. Uh, but people have just, over the years, they've taken the fun spring activities, you know, all about new life and new plants and everything, and, and they've taken those activities and just kind of connected them with Easter because Easter is the time that we celebrate the new life that Jesus brings. Um, our family has always had our own Easter traditions, and one of the things we've always done is we've hidden Easter eggs out, outside with the kids. Uh, when uh, the kids grew older, then we just, you know, we just hit them in harder places. You know, you might need a ladder or like to rappel off the house or something, you know, to be able to go find those Easter eggs. But right now we're back in that phase where we have little kids. We have, our, our grandkids are really young. And so I, I, I'm thinking back to last Easter a year ago and uh, hiding those eggs. We would hide them in plain sight, like right in the middle of the car bumper or right in the middle of the lawn or, you know, just right there where you just have to step over it. And still sometimes I didn't even see it, uh, but that was part of the fun, just pointing out each, each uh, Easter egg for the kids. This Easter, nothing feels the same. So many of our Easter traditions have been interrupted, like this year, no big brunches at the restaurant and no big family dinners, it just, it feels weird. And we all feel a loss right now. So a loss of so many things with the stay home order. We feel a loss of connection with each other. You know, we, we're trying, we're here together online, but we're missing those tender touches and side hugs and <laughs> high fives even uh, from people that we care about. It feels like a loss. We, uh, so many of us with the, the interruption of work, not going to work or even being laid off of work, it feels like a loss of significance and meaning. I mean, so much of our lives are, are revolved around our work, you know? And so that whole huge important piece is missing. I, I have uh, several friends that work in uh, the school district, uh, in the classroom or in other areas. And man, I know they're, they're feeling a loss right now. I have one friend that he was supposed to be the, the JV baseball coach for the first time and doesn't get to do it. Baseball is canceled this spring. I mean, it is crazy. I have other friends who are teachers who are missing the kids. Uh, of course, all the kids are missing their teachers, are missing their friends, are missing those fun activities that they do at school. And, you know, spring break is cool, but all spring spring break that just goes on forever. That, that doesn't feel right. It, 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 it feels sad. It feels like a loss. And I am really feeling for my friends who are uh, graduating seniors this year, graduating from high school or for, from college. Man, you look forward to that, that day, that commencement exercise so, for so long and to not have it. I know it feels like a loss. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel good. Uh, many of you are facing a loss of income, and that is scary. You may or may not be ready for that kind of thing. Probably most of us aren't. Uh, it's confusing to fill out all the paperwork, but man, it, it just it feels like a loss. We, we have a loss of hope, and instead of feeling hope because you know the economy's been booming and things are great and we feel safe, man, all of that just feels different. We've lost safety. We've lost uh, continuity of the, the economy, all those things. We've, we've even lost certainty and we're asking ourselves questions we never thought we'd be asking. Will I even be able to make it through this? Will I be able to handle all the extra pressures of this time? It feels like a lot of loss. We, we even have loss of context because no one's experienced this kind of thing before. To this extent, a global pandemic. I mean, it, it's just crazy. Everything's changed except one thing, <laughs> and we're celebrating that this Easter. The true meaning of Easter has not changed, and it never will change. It's not based on context. 
We find the Easter story in the New, in the New Testament, in, in the part of the Bible that talks about Jesus, and specifically in that section that was written by Mark, chapter 16, verses 2 to 7. And so before I, I read that uh, Bible passage together, I want to just kind of set up the context for you a little bit. Jesus taught and healed people and traveled and ministered for three years. That, that reminds me of another Easter memory. Back in the day in church, we used to do Easter plays and Easter musicals. And I, I remember this one specific play way back when uh, Shelly and I were first married. And uh, we, everyone was dressed up in Bible costumes and we had a big orchestra and singers and dancers and everything like that. And this one guy, one actor from our church, he, he had uh, the role of playing someone who could not walk. And Jesus was going to come through the crowd and see him and heal him. So this guy, our friend, had one line. His one line was, I can walk. And he's supposed to jump up and get all excited and everything. Well, the, the music's playing, the audience is there, and everything is exciting, and the lights are blaring. And, and Jesus comes through and touches him, and he forgot his line. And he jumps up. And he goes, I can see. Oh, wait, I can walk. I can see and I can walk. <laughs> so I guess, I guess Jesus just took care of everything <laughs> in one, one touch. I love those, uh, those memories. Well, getting back to Jesus' story. It was a Friday and Jesus was crucified and he laid down his life for us on the cross. They took his body down off the cross. They laid him in a tomb. But his followers weren't allowed to do the normal custom right then, which would be to come and apply burial spices and perfumes to the body. It was like a final respect. But they weren't allowed to do that uh, because it was already evening of a Jewish holy day. And so they didn't even get the opportunity to have closure for their loss after Jesus died. And Jesus' followers probably just like you and me today, they thought that dead people stayed dead. So they were feeling an acute sense of loss when Jesus died. But on that first Easter Sunday morning, some of the women who were followers of Jesus, they went to the tomb to bring the spices and pay their respects. And that's when they discovered something that was very unexpected. So that's kind of uh, the context for our story. Let's go to Mark chapter 16 starting in verse two. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for, uh, for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe, sitting on the, on the right side. The women were shocked. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. Wow, they did not see that coming. Jesus didn't stay dead. <laughs> On the third day, he rose from the dead and he is alive still today. And that changes everything. If not even death can hold Jesus back, then nothing can. There is nothing that Jesus can't turn around in your life. He laid down his life and he took it back up again. Man, Easter means that Jesus can turn any situation upside down. And there are some things that I think of when I think of the meaning of Easter. Jesus died so you could live. Jesus died so you could live. In another part of the Bible, in the, the area called Colossians, in, in chapter 2, it says you were dead because of your sins. So he, the, he's talking about how we were all spiritually dead in our relationship to God. Our, our relationship with God was dead. So he says you were dead because of your sins. Then God made you alive. So talking spiritually speaking, 
God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. Praise his name. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Wow. Jesus died so you could live. Another thing I think about when I think about the meaning of Easter, Jesus' body was broken so you could be healed. Jesus' body was broken so you could be healed. In, in the, the part of the Bible called 1 Peter, it's the first letter that Peter wrote, chapter 2, he said, Jesus personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Wow, that is such great news. And we know that sometimes your healing happens here in this life, and sometimes you get ultimate healing in the life to come. Either way, it's healing that Jesus has provided for you. Another thing I think of when I think about the meaning of Easter, Jesus came to earth so you could go to heaven. Jesus came to earth so you could go to heaven. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says this, just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam. In other words, we're all descendants of the first people, Adam and Eve. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection, this being raised from the dead. Here's the order. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. Jesus is coming back. And Easter means that Jesus can turn any situation in your life upside down. Here's some good news. Loss is not the end of, the, of your story. There is hope in Jesus. Jesus turns your loss into life. And really, I would summarize my whole message today that way. Jesus turns your loss into life. There's a very encouraging section in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 4 that says this, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so that, listen to this, you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Praise the Lord, for since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. I'm going to skip down to verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And first, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Wow! Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. Somebody say, yes! <laughs> you don't have to grieve like people who have no hope because Jesus has taken away the sting of death you can have hope for all the areas of your life where you are experiencing loss right now. Even death is not the end for a follower of Jesus. Jesus turns your loss into life. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Romans 8, 28. And this is what it says. And we know, somebody say, we know. <laughs> we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. God makes the good, the bad, and the ugly collaborate or work together to turn out for your good. If your faith is in Jesus and you're a follower of Jesus, he is going to take all the losses we're experiencing right now. He's going to take the sting out, just like he took the sting out of death, and he's going to turn it around and bring something good out of it for your life. Jesus takes your losses and he transforms them. He makes your losses do a 180. The, the opposite of loss is advantage or improvement or benefit. So Jesus takes your losses 
and he brings an advantage to you from him. He brings out benefit to your life. I was thinking back to five years ago as a church, we had a vision to relocate our church. But at the time, God said no. And I gotta tell you, it felt like a loss. I, I was talking uh, with somebody this week about it and just out of nowhere, I started crying. I still feel the loss. But now, looking back with perspective, I can see all the benefits that Jesus brought through that loss and despite that loss. I know one of the things I feel very personally is that Jesus developed character and strength and faith in me. And, and so I, I know, I, I, because I've walked through loss with Jesus, I, I know and I believe and I've experienced that he can bring something good out of it. I know that for our church, he, he's brought our church a lot closer together. We're a much more tight-knit family. Uh, he's shown us how to be authentic worshipers. I mean, there's just been a lot of good things that Jesus brought out of it. In spite of that loss, Jesus turned our loss into life. Just recently, my wife had two cancer surgeries and a bunch of invasive tests. And I, I, I gotta tell you, it sure seemed like a loss. She just now, this week, finished six and a half weeks of daily radiation treatments. She, uh, in the midst of all of that that she was going through, having to work from home right now actually turned out to be a blessing for her because of the pain that she was going through with the radiation. Shelly made new friends at the clinic people that she would never, healthcare workers and other patients that she would never have the opportunity to meet any other way. And she counts that a treasure. Just this week, uh, again, Shelly and I, we cried tears of joy together as we just received all these outpourings of love from friends. People sent flowers, uh, people dropped by flowers at our front door because, you know, no contact. Uh, and uh, people sent all these notes that they wrote on brown paper hearts to just say that we're proud of you, Shelly, we love you, and we appreciate you. And, and I gotta tell you, as, as Shelly and I were, were uh, just thinking about those things, we, we started crying, tears of joy. And it's, it's just another one of those ways that Jesus has turned our loss into life. And that's what he does, that is his specialty. So if Jesus can conquer death, if he can bring something beautiful out of your loss, then, then you will you'll experience what it means that he takes the sting out of death. Jesus uh, said, uh, it was said about Jesus rather, that because of the joy awaiting him, Jesus endured the cross. So in other words, he could go through something really hard knowing that there's gonna be joy on the other side. And I want to just encourage you with this thought today. Because Jesus endured, you can endure. Because Jesus made it, you can make it. Because you can rely on Jesus and his strength. So in what ways are you experiencing loss right now? Instead of continually, continually looking at the loss and letting it depress you, what could happen if you started believing for a benefit? What would happen if you started trusting God for a triumph on the other side? Trust Jesus to turn your loss into life. I'd like to pray for you right now because I know that many of my friends and many of you I, I haven't even had an opportunity to meet yet, many of you are experiencing loss. All of the examples I shared earlier in this message were from friends. And I, my heart goes out to you. So I just wanna pray for you. And I know you're in a time of loss and uh, I, I want to just believe uh, with you for a benefit, all right? So let's pray, I wanna pray for you right now. Lord, I just lift up all my friends right now that are, that are feeling such loss. Everything feels uh, unstable and weird and crazy and we've, we've lost all the familiar. And Jesus, I wanna ask you to be the rock, the foundation, the stability for my friends, for all those who are watching uh, and tuning in right now. 
Lord, I pray that you would give us hope, that you would just have this picture of you reaching down and, and lifting up our chin. And Lord, I pray that you would lift up our chin, lift up our eyes and help us to see you and help us to believe for what you can and will do through this. Lord, I'm asking you to turn loss uh, and tragedy into triumph for, for my friends, for all those who are watching. Lord, I'm asking you to bring a benefit, an advantage, an improvement that, that, that would come out of this time of loss. Lord, I pray that you do something in our hearts, do something in our relationship with you, and even in our relationships with each other, Lord. So I'm asking you, in Jesus' name, Lord, to turn our loss into life. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I want to pray uh, for, for you about one more thing, if I could. And I want to ask you, if you have never put your faith in Jesus, I want to invite you to put your faith in Him. I, I read so many scriptures today from the Bible that, that are promises and uh, just positive things that God wants to do in the life of the believer now and in the future. There's, there's life now and heaven in the future. Jesus is coming back for all those who are, are watching for His return. And I want to invite you to put your, your faith in Jesus Christ, to not only believe in Him, but to become His apprentice. An apprentice, you know, kind of joins up with a master, uh, a professional in, in a trade, and you study that professional and you, that master, and you learn from them, and you ask them questions, and you develop your own skill as, as you follow them. I want to invite you to be an apprentice of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Well, you turn away from your sin. As, as I mentioned, we're all children of Adam. We all have sin in our lives. We all have death in our lives and in our relationship with, with God. So I wanna invite you, turn away from your sin. Sin is all those things that um, we do that harm ourselves or others, all those things that disconnect us from God. So turn away from your sin. Turn your life over to God. In other words, do a 180. Don't, don't walk uh, in those ways anymore, but walk uh, to uh, just uh, surrender your life and everything that you are to Jesus and let him lead. Let him, uh, let him be the one that calls the shots and leads you in life. Learn from him. Would you like to do that today? Would you like to give your life to Jesus and become his apprentice? If so, I want to pray for you. And I, I just encourage you wherever you are, just to quiet, quiet yourself for just a moment and pray this prayer after me, just sort of like at a, at a wedding or a ceremony where um, you, you repeat after uh, someone, repeat after me this prayer, but pray it from your heart. Say it with your mouth to God. Let's do it together. Jesus, you say it, Jesus. So Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. Turn my loss into life. Now, I choose to follow you starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is so awesome. I cannot think of a better day than Easter to experience new life. And we believe based on all those verses in the Bible I just read to you, you once were dead in your sins. You now are alive in Christ because you have been forgiven. Now, I want you to know, I'm just going to level with you. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Following Jesus is much more than just watching a service online. Following Jesus is a 24-7 life of, of, of becoming like Him, of, of walking in community with other believers, other followers of Jesus, other apprentices. And so Pastor Shelley and I want to connect with you one-on-one uh, -on -one and help you to take the next steps. So if you have not already done this already, would you be sure and go to our website, nfc.church, and fill out a connect card. You'll see it right there on the opening page. And, and check the box, I made a decision for Jesus today. So if you just prayed that prayer with me just now and you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, fill out that connect card on our website, check that box, and then that'll let me know that you prayed this prayer. And uh, Pastor Shelley and I will e email you some next steps. All right, so we don't, we don't wanna just leave you hanging. Come on now, don't leave me hanging, all right? So let's walk together, let's do this, and, and let's walk together as followers of Jesus Christ. Man, thanks for joining today. Happy Easter.
Hey, thank you for joining us today. We're glad that you could be with us as we do church online this Easter Sunday. If you are new with us, please text uh, new, the number two, NFC, to 97000, and that's how we'll be able to stay connected with you while we're all doing the stay-at-home stuff. If you have any prayer requests, please text those to 253-733-1640, and our staff will be praying for you. We'd love to partner with you and trust God for the things that you're needing in your life. Yeah, definitely. Also, you can join us uh, on with a Bible study. It started now. Be a part of it. It's part of our community. We do great Zoom meetings and pray together, hang out, and really just dive into the Word of God. Uh, it's Anxious for Nothing. It's a really great series. We want you to be a part of that. You can go to the app or the website, sign up now. Uh, also, we have some awesome kids options on kids uh, on YouTube. You can find that right here. You're, you're probably on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, you can hop over to YouTube and see that kids video right now. Do you guys like the kids video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they love it. Good job, Pastor CJ, getting those up. Uh, we are so excited for what God is doing. We want to see you here next week to join us again to worship together. So we will see you next Sunday. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Hey. Happy Easter. See you next time. Bye-bye.